Hi, David Harper of Bionic Turtle with an illustration of the implied volatility smile or what's oftentimes just called the volatility smile. This is an actual volatility smile that I just plotted using data for the stock trading on Apple. And specifically, I pulled traded op option prices on Apple's stock, their short-term call options expiring in July 2010. And here is the resulting implied volatility smile. We can almost call this a sp volatility smirk or volatility skew. What we have with the volatility smile is a two-dimensional plot. On the y-axis, we've got implied volatility. On the x-axis, there are a few different measures we could use. Real basic one I've got here is the strike price of the option. We, there could also be the ratio of strike to stock. Also plotting option delta is common. I'm using the basic strike price for the x-axis. So I plotted this volatility smile. I'm going to isolate on just one point to show how I got that. And it's illustrated right down here. First of all, the most important thing is I looked at actual traded options and their trading prices. So, for example, as of yesterday, an option on that Apple's stock with a strike price of 250 this is, happens to be a call option, but I could have done put options as well. It happened to trade at last $25.20. In other words, it would cost you $25.20 to purchase a call option. Now, if I take the Black Shoals option pricing model, and here's just a very stylized version. I'm not showing you all of the underline, but in really simple terms, the Black Shoals option pricing model allows us to price the value of a call option as a function of several inputs. So let's say I came along here and I just decided to input 30% volatility. That's denoted here by the sigma. And then I have a strike price of 250. The stock was a little bit north of 270, I think. I'm assuming volatility of 30%. I made an assumption on the risk free rate of 4%. And the option term here was about one month. No dividends. Now, if I put those into the Black Shoals option pricing model, and I'm going to spare you the details here. That's not the point of this illustration. Then Black Shoals Merton returns to me an option price and I'm going to call that specifically a model price of $26.03. Now, that's different from the trading, the observed traded price or the observed market price of $25.20. So here's the key thing about implied volatility. Implied volatility sort of works backwards or reverse engineers and looks for, looks to solve for the volatility that produces a model price, that is to say a Black Scholes Merton option price produced by the model, that's equal to the price we observed in the market. And we have to iterate for that. There's no direct analytical solution. So you can see I could go up to 35%, but I'm moving further away in terms of my model price. And if I went back and forth, if I goal seeked, so to speak, which is really literally how we have to do it, there are some methods. I would find that if, if I settled on 27.8% as the volatility input here into the model, the Black Scholes Merton model, it would produce for me a model price of $25.20, which, because I kept experimenting here, equals the price that's observed or the traded market price. And so in doing that, I've settled on what is the implied volatility. In other words, if the market price of the option is $25.20, it's telling me, the market's telling me that the volatility must be 27.8%. Well, almost. So let me get to that part of it. Now, if I, what I also went and did, because this volatility smile is a two dimensional plot, across various strike prices, or what we could say are the varying degrees of in the moneyness or out of the moneyness. Here we have out of the money puts. Here we have out of the money calls. What I've also done is plot it for different strike prices. And you'll notice it's almost a smile, maybe closer to the skew that we expect for equity options. 
So I've done this for an option chain. And now if I have a lot of faith in the Black Scholes Merton model, this is maybe not what I expect. What you have a reasonable right to expect at this point would be a flat horizontal line because if we're faithful to the uh, Black Scholes Merton model, we know that one of the underlying assumptions there is constant volatility. So at first, maybe we're surprised to, to, to see some implied volatility that's non-constant. What do we make of this? Well, most broadly, we could say this implicates the model and says the model must not be working exactly right to traded prices. Now, really, that's not a surprise. The model, after all, does not include technical factors like liquidity and supply and demand, which can alter the price and therefore the implied volatility. So we shouldn't really be surprised. The volatility smile is basically telling us that the model's not perfectly up to the job of pricing the options correctly. More narrowly, what do we tend to do? Well, we tend to infer from the shape of the volatility smile that the distribution of the underlying asset returns is not log normal per the underlying Black Scholes Merton model. So let me say that again. Black Scholes Merton assumes a log normal distribution of the underlying asset price. And so what we tend to do is if there's a volatility smile here that's not flat, this higher implied volatility over here suggests to us that the that left tail must be heavier than the log normal. If this was a symmetrical smile, higher implied volatilities on both sides would correspond with an asset distribution that has heavier tails on both sides. If it were inverted, like a frown, that would implicate lighter tails relative to the log normal distribution. So in practice, we tend to use the volatility smile to indicate to us what that says about actual asset distributions as a pair as compared to the more clinical distributions that are assumed as an input into the model. Now that's not the only difference. We could also assume that volatility is not constant, which is an assumption of the model. And another, we could also infer from the volatility smile that volatility is time varying or actually jumps abruptly and does not follow the diffusion process that's part of the uh, Brownian motion that underlies the Black Shoals. And so finally, the other interesting implication for FRM exam candidates is this crash of phobia, the notion that before uh, Black Monday in 1987, the volatility smile was more or less flat or flatter, nearer to flat. And the crash of phobia hypothesis suggested by Rubenstein is that these out of the money puts after the crash, traders became a lot more concerned about that tail risk. And so if you're selling an out of the money put, you wanted to attach more probability than you wanted to basically say, well, that tail's got to be a little heavier than usual. So I'm going to price these higher. So this higher implied volatility for out of the money puts reflects that quote unquote crash of phobia idea. So this is David Harper, the Bionic Turtle. Thanks for your time.